In this presentation, I will be telling us how to immigrate to Canada without consultant or an immigration lawyer. You can choose to hire an immigration lawyer or you may decide not to hire a consultant. But in our presentation and subsequent uh, presentation, I will be showing us what to do with or without an immigration consultant. Whatever you do is your choice. And I will be just showing us and I will be explaining to us what we need to do. And I will appreciate if you can like and subscribe to this channel. And you can post your comments on what we can bring up or what you want us to tell us in immigrating to Canada with or without being means to any consultant or without hiring a consultant or an immigration lawyer please like and subscribe to this channel thank you your comment is important to us we would like to have feedback from you what you want us to cover or you can send us mail you can ask us what whatever you want to you guys in any area where you need assistance you can text us no but i want to say that i am not a consultant and i'm not an immigration lawyer whatever i'm doing i'm doing uh, humanity sick and uh, i will be telling us uh, what we need to do if you need to hire a consultant if you want to hire a consultant and what you need to do on your own so please like and subscribe to this channel in this presentation i'll be telling us on what we need to do to immigrate to canada um, with or without an immigration consultant you can do everything by yourself your application your processing if you just get to the citizens and uh, immigration canada website all the information are there but the challenge is all the information are not in one single place it is it's a little bit difficult to get all the information that is needed in this presentation i'll be showing us all the necessary information and the necessary steps to immigrate to canada so you can choose to use a consultant and you can decide not to use a consultant I want to tell us that I am not an immigration lawyer or an immigration consultant, but I'm doing this to help uh, humanity and to help uh, one another. So after the, uh, I, I hope you will like this video and at the end of the video I want you to give your comment below and for your advice and whatever you want us to do, your interest, what you want us to cover or what you want us to or what you want to know or you can send us mail you can send us requests we attend to your request promptly and uh, we'll give you a little guide we can uh, that is necessary under under the law immigration is very very important right from each long people have been immigrating from one place to another but out of the countries that we have in the world these are some good countries that you can immigrate to Canada, number one, United States, Australia, and Dubai. In the recent time, it's a little bit difficult to immigrate to United States. And we look at the population of United States, is uh, is is alarming. The landmass of Canada is the second largest in the whole world, and the population in Canada is less than 50 million. And the population in the United States of America is roughly around. 300 million and the land mass of canada is three times bigger than that of us so even if the whole of some country the whole the whole of canada can can easily accommodate three times of the population the current population in the united states if the infrastructure are put in place so some some people will be asking when we canada stop accepting immigrants you no know, they are not stopping soon but it is good for you to do what you can do now because if you don't do it on time policy keeps changing every now and then your proof of fund and some other things that you need to do to do that will be showing us in the course of, of this video so whatever it is good to make a while the sun is shining so out of them all the place best best place to immigrate to is canada although all of them are similar processing procedure there's no way you want to travel 
to another country that you know need to make uh, uh, make processing. You need to process your documentation and some other things that you need to do. But our focus shall be on Canada immigration. We are not looking at United States, uh, US, United States immigration to uh, how to immigrate to USA, or how to immigrate to Australia, or how to immigrate to Dubai. We will be covering that in the subsequent video depending on your request, depending on your comment, depending on the like that we have, and depending on the encouragement that we have from you and for the subsequent video. As a Canadian, you can travel to so many countries without visa. So many people want to travel to the US. If you are a Canadian citizen, you can travel to the United States of America without visa. And as a matter of fact, the place is a stone thrown as if you are moving from one city to another city. They are so close that they share border. So Canada is one of the best places you can immigrate to because freely you can travel to so many countries without visa. And um, one thing that Canada is saying to every one of us is come to Canada. Yes, they are asking us to, if we go to their side, what you will see there is come to Canada. Canada is the home for for everybody and is a land of diversity. We have different culture, different ethnic, et ethnic group, different uh, countries in Canada. If you want to buy a car or a house, you can ask from the friends and people around you. But it is unfortunate that immigration is not that simple. It needs for proper information and proper representation to be able to do what is needful. If you don't have the information, there is no way you can be able to do immigration. Even if you have the funds, you have the resources, you have the qualification. There are so many people who are more qualified than those who are in Canada currently. But because they do not have information, and it is often said that if you are not informed, you will be deformed. So, um, if you have right information, then you can be able to do the right thing at the right time. You can go to anywhere and say, ah, I want to buy this car. What, what, what is the make of the car you want to buy? Is it Toyota? How is it? Is it Benz? How is it? Is it uh, uh, BMW? You know, you can ask, you want to buy a car? Is it an apartment? Is it a condo? Is it a, you know, you can ask and they give you information. But immigration is not like that because we have so many and it is, it is peculiar to individual. What is applicable to you may not be applicable to me. What is applicable to another country may not be applicable to another 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 uh, another ethnic group. So you need to understand what you need to do and how you need to do do it. Many times people travel abroad. You must have we, some people have their relatives, friends who traveled abroad and we never hear anything about them. We know about those who crawl through the Mediterranean Sea those who cross from Libya, those who cross, you know, just because they want to, they want to cross to Europe or they want to cross to another country. And we discover some of them, they get drunk, some of them, they get killed, some of them, they get lost, and we never hear anything about them after they have traveled or after they said they have traveled. And it is not because they don't want to communicate, it is because of the eventuality, what has happened to them. Some of them are running from pillar to post. Because, why? Because the, the travel through the wrong channel so it is good for you to go through the right channel it is good for you to have the right information it is good for you to know what you need to do and how you need to do it so that when you get there you know some of them when they get there they cannot even come back to their own country because if they come back they is that they arrest them at the port of entry or they are jail or they or something terrible might happen to them so it is good for you to go in the right way and the legal way and how do you go in the right way and the legal way we will show you how to go and what you need to do and how you need to do them you can do all by yourself canada has made it so simple that you can do all by yourself there is nothing special in immigration to another country the thing that can be done by you however if you are busy or you do not have time or you don't want to make mistake or otherwise you can use the service of professional this is where immigration lawyer where they come in this is where um, uh, consultants where they come in so if you are busy and you don't want to make mistake because you have a lot of documentation to, to, to document you have a lot of things to attend attend to and then if you are now 
employing the service of an immigration consultant or you're employing the service of an immigration lawyer, then it will come with a fee. So you will need to pay their charges. And if for any reason you do not make use of immigration consultant, you have to pay attention to details. You must dot your high, you must cross your T. And it is not good for you to tell lies because they don't even want liars at all in their country. So whatever you are saying, you must be truthful in what you are saying. And uh, your information must always be consistent. If for any reason you make a mistake or you lie and it is discovered, you can be banned for five years or even more. And then you will not be able to apply or you will not be able to do anything and it can even lead to lost or uh, loss of fund. So this is one of this is Canadian passport. This is a very you know it has great value and uh, I just pray that you'll be able to get this sometime someday. Just keep watching this channel and uh, subscribe, give your comments, encourage us. Then we'll do more video on what you need to do and how you need to go about it. What are the components involved in general to be able to have this permanent residency or to be able to immigrate to Canada or to be able to have Canadian passport? The first thing is you will have the international passport of your own country. You must have the international passport of your own country. Without the international passport of your own country, you cannot do anything tangible and you cannot even travel anywhere. Then you need a visa to that desired country. The country you want to go to, if you want to go to Canada, for example, now you need a visa to get to that uh, to that country. And based on your education background, the processing channel that are available, I will, I will be showing us. These are the routes that you can take in the, maybe uh, getting to Canada or in getting Canada um, getting Canada permanent uh, resident. First. The fastest is the education route. When we are looking at how to get to Canada, the fastest is the education route, but it is not the cheapest. Then, visiting visa or tourist visa. All this require large sum of money, and once you get there, you can perfect your paper for permanent residency. Let me quickly explain this item one. I said the fastest is education route. If you are able to gain admission to any of the Canadian University or Canadian College or Canadian Trade Center, uh, trade, 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 trade College, you once you are able to process your document in less than six months, you can be in Canada. If you can arrange for your visiting to visit a family member or to visit a friend or to visit a, a, a religious organization with ease, you can be able to get there. But you need to prove that you have the fund. And some of that is before you can get there. You can go there as a tourist. Canada has a lot of fresh water, a lot of tourist attraction center where you can visit, where you can go to. And when you get there, you can stay there as a visitor, you can stay there as a tourist, you can stay there as an education person. But you cannot become a permanent resident when you are staying on a visiting visa or you are staying on a tourist visa. It can be changed to maybe working visa or some other type of visa or education visa. And in this scenario, when you get there, this you can still do on your own. But the immigration lawyer, immigration consultant can quickly assist you in some of the areas what you can do in this area. But once you get there, you look for a way to legalize your stay. But you cannot, you are not yet a permanent resident. You need to do some other things for you to become a permanent. You can apply for, uh, you can seek for admission into school. You can look for maybe uh, temporary employment. And with that, you need to do some things on your visa and you need to visit the, uh, the uh, IRC's office and then legalize your state. Some people try there, travel there on the refugee claim claiming that uh, there is a war in their country, there is this in their country and that in their country. The, um, the, the, uh, the irony of that is it can take years to determine their case. Either they will stay in Canada or they will not stay in Canada. The day their case is decided, then they will need to stay or they will need to leave the country. So it is a 50-50 chance if you are there as a refugee you can be allowed to stay and you can be deported to your country 
Then one can say go there as a business oriented person. If you go there as business oriented person, you know this one it, it, it involves large sum of money. You know it can run into millions. So you you if you can prove that you want to start a business in Canada, once you have the sum of money, you don't even need to take the money from you, but you have to prove that you have the fund by your bank statement and some other things that you have. Then this one can take some time. Then you can come there to start your business, and with this you can even bring in people either you're from your own country that are working with you and some other things that can be done in this uh, category then permanent residences they require money and processing once done then you are made with permanent residency you can take all your family with you after it has been done if they are included on your on your program all this will be explaining to, to us as we make requests and as we make demand for what you want us to do for us and as we deem it with we will explain some of these things so, so any every all these other the first two category the first category in particular when you get there you will still come back to permanent residency the processing as a permanent resident so you will see but you can do the processing of permanent resident when you are still in your own country you will do all the processing with your family with your spouse with your children and once you get there you can go to school you are entitled to everything that the Canadian citizen is entitled to. The only thing you are not yet entitled to is the right to be voted for and the right to vote. Almost free for an artist and sport people, but you need to, to show your proof. Now, if you are an artist uh, or you are a sport person, easily you can migrate to Canada, but you need to show proof that truly you are an artist. You need to show proof that truly you have represented your country at the national level or at a very good level that can be proved that truly you are, you are performing this this very thing so each of these things has their pro and their con what you need to do is to choose the part that is good for you and the part that uh, that we that is most favorably uh, favorable to you as a canadian student with high heights you can work for certain hours in the week in one year you can make all your traveling expenses it is a little bit expensive to go as a student but your parent can fund it or you have a sponsor you can go but as a student you can you have you you you, you are entitled to average of 19.49 canadian dollar per hour and then you can work up to 20 hours in a week and that is around 731 dollars in a week so you can make like 2024 dollars in a month as a student and before you know it all the money that you have spent on your immigration is uh, you are you, you you would have been able to realize then i mean not even depend on your parents from the home country you know you have access to world class university as a student you know canadian university is rated as one of the best in the in the world after the study after a year you can apply for permanent residency in canada and with this you need to go to a school you know i'll be explaining this to us later a school that after you are done schooling you can be able to still work in canada so if you go to school that you will not be able to you will not be allowed to work in canada after your study after your study you will need to leave canada permanent canadian residence is the best legacy you can give to your children you know some people say the best legacy to give to any child is education but it's no longer the it's no longer the case if you give your child Canadian residency, then your child can have a better education that you that you are proud of. I want to ask you: Can you mention some some who were brought into your country from outside the country to take off special appointment? If you look at it, there are so many people that they will bring to come and head one one important position in your country. Where are they bringing them from? From outside the country, most of the time they bring them from Canada from us from australia to come ahead and because they know one they are exposed they know the state of the art equipment they know the current current um what is what is uh, what, what they need to do in technology and some other things like that so all, also in sports when you want to participate in sports in football in uh, basketball in volleyball in swimming they will look for they are citizen that is outside the country who has been trained by state-of-the-art equipment either in Canada, in US, in Australia, or in Dubai, or in the, or in England to represent in the home country. Those who are in the home country, 
who are trading, who are doing one thing or the other, they put them at the back seat. So you can discover that even if you still want to stay in your own country, and the interesting thing about Canada is you can still uh, keep your citizenship while you are in Canada yeah, from your own country, except for some other country that you have to uh, re 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 renounce your citizenship uh, as you are taking the citizenship of another country. All these prominent people that we have in our society, they have their children abroad. Go and do your investigation. You will discover that all of them, they have their children abroad or they have their citizenship abroad. So there's nothing that's, that is stopping you from processing this, even if you still want to stay in your home country. These are the things that are needed generally for you to migrate to Canada. What is needed? The first thing is fund. And I'll be showing us the fund that is needed. You know, sometimes people will ask me, what is the total fund that is required? I will tell you it's something that you spend in process. So I'll be showing us. And then when we are talking about ECA, that is the Education Credential Assessment. Then they want to know what is the equivalent of your education to the education in Canada. Then we have WES, who can evaluate your uh, credential. We have ICAS, we have Toronto CES, we have BCIT, we have ICAS. So you can use any of these, but among all of these, WES is the most popular one. ICAS too is very okay, but if you get to their website, I can still be showing us some video on that. Depending on our request, depending on the like, depending on the interest, I can still be telling us more on what to do and how to do them. Then, the next thing you need to do is you need to do your eyes general or academics. The ECA, the validity for ECA is five years, and the validity for eyes exam is two years. And you can do general or academics. General is for those who want to do economic immigration and academics for those who want to go to school so you must decide which one you want to do and which part you want to you want to follow then we have what we call proof of fund you have to prove that you have a fund to cater for yourself for the first six months when you get to canada before the system start to take care of you the first six months you must be able to take care of yourself your accommodation your feeding or you are still looking for a job or you either survive a job or the job in your feed you must be able to get uh, enough fund to take care of the well-being of your family and yourself and i'll be showing us what we need to prove as fund as individual as family and as couple then you need international passport for every member of the family that will be traveling with you then you need government birth certificate and i put the government birth certificate it's not just the birth certificate you will get from hospital it must be government birth certificate certified by the government then if you are married you need your marriage certificate then if you are both 18 you will need police report and for everybody who will be going to canada you will need medical report for this police report you must obtain police report for every country that you have visited in the last six months and all this will include it in your report when you are submitting your uh, your application and everybody will will be asked to do medical uh, medical examination and your medical examination valid for one year as i said the other time ice exam valid for two years uh eca valid for five years you can see how beautiful this country is you can see with uh, a lot of fresh water you can you, you know you have time for vacation you have different tourist center that you can visit and you can do one thing or the other if you migrate to this country you will definitely have a lovely time for yourself for your family and then for every uh, for 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 everything in the document and the procedure for provision nominee and express entry we have what you call pmp that's provision nominee and express entry you, see, you know all this i'll be explaining to us if i begin to explain all this thing this video will be too long you know express entry save all documents in pdf check if you are eligible fill the express entry form online at come to canada fill the provision form in addition to express entry if you are not qualified for the direct express entry for most people they are not qualified to fill the express entry due to age and due to the score that they have in their ice exam some people call it ielts what they have in their ice exam so you need to go to province and then you fill their eoi we call it expression of interest then you need international passport for 
principal applicant, spouse, and children if you have any in single PDF file, each on a page. Degree of PA and spouse save as separate PDF file. Then we need con you know we need our ECA or principal applicant. You save it. You know these are all the documents that we need to save. Our ECA, our IS exam. You scan them. We put them in the PDF file. You know so that we are ready to apply anytime you are you are giving ITA that is invitation to apply or LAA letter of advice to apply. The express entity will give you ITA that invitation to apply. The province will give us LAA letter of advice to apply. In that document, I'm produce your as I said all documents in PDF. Reference letter from employer. If you are fighting with your employer at this time, please try to make good relationship with them because if you are immigrating to Canada, we are interested in where you have worked before, what is your behavior, and then you will need to give a recommendation. You need to collect a recommendation letter from your employer, which will be part of your um, application to show the type of work that you are doing at your present um, um, uh, where, where you are working presently. And then you will save all this. Then you will need your NOC, that is National Occupation Code. You know, it will match the work that you are doing. So you must look for a way to match what you are doing currently with your NOC. And your NOC must be in demand occupation for you to be able to immigrate to Canada. All this we will try to explain them in our next video. Or you can, if you ask in the comment below, then we can explain to you. You can send a private message. You can send a direct message. I will send out my email if you want so that we can communicate on a personal plan and give you necessary advice. But as I said, I am not an immigration lawyer, an immigration consultant. What you are doing, you are doing it for the sake of humanity. Needed document and procedure. As I said, proof of fund save as one PDF best certificate for all. In one PDF, primary certificate if applicable. If you have professional certificate, professional certificate, you need to save them. All this shall be submitted whenever there is provincial opening or whenever there is invitation to apply. So, if you are given uh, LAA by the PN, that is provincial nominee program or an experience entry, then you will need to specify. So, with provincial nominee, an express entry for sure you will get permanent resident visa this will give you permission to work anywhere in canada or the province that has selected you or the province that is giving you a letter of uh, that is that is giving you uh, application that, that is allowing you to apply into canada with all the others the best you can get is working permit that is if you are a student you are a tourist or you are on a visit the best you can get is working permit or you convert your visa to uh, something that that is uh, that can make you to work in canada and once you are on your permanent residence session in canada for three years in five years you have to be in canada the total time you spend in canada in five years should not be less than three years even if you immigrate to canada you can leave you can come back you can go but in five years you must have spent in total three years and if you have been able to do that then you can now apply for citizenship in canada and if you do that then you can be voted for you can vote and then you can you have canadian passport then you are able to do as any canadian any person born in canada can do you can be voted for and you can vote assistance you can still seek for assistance in submission of the form, but this will require the payment of professional fee to Canadian lawyer or immigration consultant. You can do everything by yourself. You can do everything, you know, by going to the Canadian uh, uh, website, as I was showing, as I'm telling us and telling us some other things that we need to do. But please note, the issue of fees visa is solely represented of Canadian government. So it's either you do it on your own or you employ the service of a professional i will show us additional things that we still need to do if you want to do it on your own and if you want to uh, use an immigration consultant is a canadian site for visa if you want to apply for 
Canadian visa, either for uh, visiting visa or you want to apply for a tourist visa. This is the site you need to go to. If you want to apply for, you want to know if you score 67 minimum for your calculation because you need to score 67 before you can even before you can even imagine or before you can even say you want to apply for Canada, Canada uh, immigration. Then these are if you want to do Australia credit, Australia calculator. Here is a calculator site for C C R S to know what is your C R S. Is it a two distant? Is it three distant? You want to know what is your what is your score or what is your point on the Canadian side before you even apply at all. These are the payments that you need to make. You know, many a times people will ask, how much will it cost me to immigrate to Canada? The fee for the independent skilled class worker as economic class. If you want to immigrate as an economic class, the economic class are those who want to immigrate to Canada as a permanent to be a permanent resident. You know, the principal applicant, you know, it has it has newly been reviewed. The basic applicant will pay 825 Canadian dollar. The spouse will pay 825 Canadian dollar. Um, if you have a dependent or your child is above 22 years, you will pay 825 Canadian dollar. Then, if your dependent child is less than the 20, the, the age is below 22, they will pay 225 Canadian dollar. It used to be 150 Canadian dollar. Then, the right of permanent residence fee all these other ones the upper one they are not refundable but this one is refundable if your application is um, is uh, is rejected or is 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 cancelled you know if you are both 22 you pay 500 each the spouse will pay the husband the 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 principal applicant will pay but for age for children below age 21 they will not pay anything for right of permanent residency. Then, if you are considering going there as a business person, your application fee is one thousand five hundred and seventy-five Canadian dollar. Your spouse will pay eight hundred and twenty-five Canadian dollars. You know, just similar to what we have before. The difference is just that what the applicant will pay in this case, but the applicant will need to prove. That he has the money to support himself as a business person or to establish the desired business. Then, if you want to sponsor your parents, somebody who is already there, you want to sponsor family, sponsor father, or sponsor, you want to sponsor a relation that is above 50 years. The sponsor will pay 75 Canadian dollar, the applicant will pay 475. The spouse or common in long partner will be 550. And then if the if that person you are sponsoring as a dependent child who is above 22, you will pay 550. And then less will pay 150. And then all others, you know, the permanent the right of permanent residency fee, you will still need to pay 500, 500 Canadian dollar for that. So you are required to bring the following amount of money if you apply as independent or skilled worker. Number of family number funds required. If it is an individual who is immigrating to Canada, you are expected to prove that you have 12,960 Canadian dollars. If you are two, maybe it is husband and wife, you will prove that you have 16,135 Canadian dollars. If it is husband and wife with a child, you need to prove 19,839 Canadian dollars. If it is husband and wife with two children, you will need to prove 24,000 Canadian dollars. If it is husband and wife with three children, they will need to prove 27,315 Canadian dollars. On and on like that. For each additional family, you will be adding 3,000. 492 Canadian dollar. It is subject to change from time to time. And this fund must be in your account for six months ahead of the time that you are submitting your application. What do I mean by ahead of the time that you are submitting your application? The money must not be deposited into your account at once. And if you are depositing the money into your account at once, you need to explain how the money how you are able to get the money or how you realize the money so what they want it is not that we need to have all these 
in cash or we call it proof of fund that is the fund that is available to you for spending when you are in canada because you will need this money for your accommodation for your grocery for moving around for the next six months for you to be able to settle down when you get there if you have dependent child government of canada will be paying you for taking care of those children health care will be free you know when you get there education is free for the children but for some things that you need to do in the first six months they will not be free so you need to take care of yourself and if you get there you will discover that this money will just be barely be enough for you to spend in six months because the what you yourself will be realizing will far far more than this when you start to work in your feet or in the survivor job So as I said, in order to calculate more than seven family members, you simply add 3,492 Canadian dollars for each additional dependent. You will need to provide proof of fund when you submit your application for immigration at the time of your interview or assessment by the overseas visa office at the time of entry into Canada. It is better for you to have the fund in your account. Six months, you know, maybe in three things, you know, over the over six months. You know, I'll be explaining what we mean by proof of fund to us and how to be able to get proof of fund. Proof of fund is not difficult to get if you uh, stick to this channel and you ask some uh, important questions. We'll tell you what to do and how to go about it. The next guy need to have the necessary financial support become less important if you have arranged employment in Canada. You know, for you to have proof of fund, if you have arranged employment, that is, an, employment, an employer is ready to take you up in Canada. You will not need to prove any fund because the employer will be responsible for your accommodation and the employer will be responsible for, uh, will be paying you your monthly salary. So they know that right from day one, you already have a place to stay. Right from day one, you already have source of income. So you may not need to prove any fund in that in that, in that that case. But it will still be good for you to have necessary fund so that you will not be stranded when you get there in case of any eventuality. Thanks for your attention and thanks for your time. If you have any questions, we will appreciate if you can ask in the comment below. We will appreciate if you can like and subscribe to this channel for more and uh, important video. And in the area that you want us to cover, you can let us know. Thank you for your time and thank you for your attention. Thank you. And God bless. We appreciate your comments, your uh, feedback as we as we grow this channel together. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more updates, for more information on how you can immigrate to Canada by yourself and uh, without an immigration lawyer or without a consultant and if you choose to hire a consultant to show you what to do and how to do it either as a student or as an economic immigrant or maybe you want to start your own business thank you